So guys, obviously Max Verstappen won yesterday's Canadian Grand Prix. A fantastic drive was pushed very hard by Ferrari and Carlos Sainz. They were pretty quick in the Grand Prix in Canada. But now that Red Bull have won six races in a row and Max has won five of the last six and is in such great form and Ferrari have dipped massively in their form in the last few races. And now the championship lead has grown to the nearest Ferrari driver being Charles Leclerc of 49 points. I believe Max Verstappen is uncatchable in the Drivers' Championship. And not just Verstappen, but Red Bull also in the constructor standings as well. And what I'm going to do here is get into exactly why I believe that is the case. But before we get into, say, the last you know few races, let's start, obviously, with the start of the season. Where Red Bull, despite obviously you know winning in Saudi Arabia, it was a fantastic victory and having a couple of retirements uh, due to fuel uh, line problems, I believe, for the Red Bulls. Um, in terms of the pace of their car, it was not a great start to the season. And the main reason they were lacking a lot of pace at the time, especially compared to now where they are much quicker than they were in those first three Grand Prix, especially at the Australian Grand Prix, where obviously Ferrari took their last victory um, in the season so far. Red Bull, the reason they were so much slower was because their car was just simply too heavy. And it was a big problem for them in the first couple of months of the season. Obviously, the uh, the minimum weight was, um, I think, raised from 758 to 798 kilograms. But despite that, Red Bull were still struggling a lot with cutting the weight off their car and it was a big reason why ferrari were just so quick or so much quicker than red bull in the first uh, three grand prix of the season and as we go to this you'll see that um and this article came out i think just before the australian grand prix and it you know really gets into it's from autosport it gets into how the Red Bull at the time was just weighing too much to really be properly competitive with Ferrari like it is now. So as you can see, it says F1's new technical regulations for 2022 resulted in a weight increase from 752 kilograms, actually, to 795. The teams, and not just Red Bull, but a lot of the teams have been struggling to meet the minimum weight. Um, and... Later on in the article, it goes to Helmut Marco, who at the time, this was early April that this uh, article came out, acknowledged that the uh, RB18 car was running overweight and that it had to focus on reducing this figure to remain competitive at the front, given that Ferrari weighed, I think it was at least 10 kilograms, um, around, yeah, probably 10 kilograms less than the Red Bull. And it really, you know, was a massive advantage for them. And he went on to say it's much more difficult to get the weight off uh, because of the cost cap. Uh, you have to calculate more precisely where technical progress, where weight reduction and reliability can be found, i.e. these three components, and then you have to find the right compromise. But one thing is clear, you certainly won't be able to drive at the front uh, of the field this season if you are overweight. And I think around the time, there are estimations that Red Bull and also Mercedes were as much as 15 kilograms overweight. It's a big reason as well why Mercedes was so slow at the time, uh, not just Red Bull compared to where they are now. Obviously, Mercedes, you know, still not great, but Red Bull a lot quicker. But obviously, since then, improvements have been made. And by the Spanish Grand Prix, Red Bull pretty much got on par with Ferrari in terms of the weight of the car. As Helmut Marco would say, that their weight loss target is finally set to be achieved, and it was achieved at the Spanish Grand Prix. As he went on to say, there uh, we start with new parts as, uh, with which we can finally reach our optimum weight. So far, we were relatively well above the required minimum weight of 798 kilograms. Ferrari and uh, us are on par now. The difference in the future will be who gets the best out of the package on the respective racetrack and then he goes on to say that he looks forward to the battle so it did take you know two or three races to get that red bull and its weight down um i think they took i know on verstappen's car they took at least 
I think it was six or seven kilograms off at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, and then I think they shed another. Yeah, I think either at the Miami Grand Prix or Spanish Grand Prix, another three to five kilograms. I don't know the exact numbers, but I do know that, um, yeah, that is what uh, the estimates are in terms of the weight reduction that's happened at Red Bull. If that weight reduction did not happen and they were still suffering with this problem, they would not be in the position they are in now what it means is no matter what track they go to red bull even if ferrari are quicker they'll still be competitive with ferrari as opposed to what we saw at the australian grand prix which is where ferrari were miles ahead i think they were like half a second quicker in the race with charles leclerc compared to verstappen and perez and which was way too off the pace for red bull at the time but also a big reason why you know what's that uh, weight reduction was made a big reason why Red Bull have been able to be so quick in the last few races is their top speed. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find any articles slash analysis on just why is the Red Bull so quick in a straight line? Because it's not actually to do with the power unit. The Ferrari power unit is actually estimated to be better in terms of outright power. But the Red Bull was designed in such a way that it has incredible low drag, but still maintaining very good levels of downforce. But as you can see here at the maximum speeds in Miami, um, Red Bull, and at this point, you know, they've cut a lot of weight off their car. Red Bull, incredibly quick down the straight. So the advantage they had and still have over Ferrari in this aspect is definitely a massive one to have in a championship fight. In the main speed trap, for example... The two Red Bulls were pretty much 10 kilometers an hour faster down the straights than Ferrari were. In F1, that is a massive difference, especially between two teams who are very competitive to one another. And also here is one from Baku. Not as quick in Baku uh, with the speed traps. I think that's because Red Bull uh, run their car uh, in Baku with a bit more downforce than maybe they did in Miami. But... Still, with the finish line uh, speed trap, you can see the Red Bulls about, say, six, five to six kilometers an hour faster. And this this is, despite Ferrari running a low downforce rear wing. So if Ferrari had not run that, you know, low downforce rear wing, it probably would have been another 10 kilometer an hour difference. That has been massive for Red Bull in... Um, the races really since Miami, where it's really made such a difference for them in 2022. And obviously, after the first few races, with the weight being cut off and also the straight line speed they had and the good, solid aerodynamic package they had, they begun to see some success. As at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, Max Verstappen took a very important sprint race win and Grand Prix win with Leclerc finishing down in sixth in the Grand Prix. And then in Miami, despite Ferrari locking out the front row, Verstappen used that straight line speed advantage very well to pass Sainz on the first lap and Leclerc a few laps into the Grand Prix. It was a fantastic bounce back from Verstappen. And then obviously, after those two Grand Prix, Ferrari cracked under the pressure of the championship fight. Obviously, in Monaco, they cost themselves victory with a very poor strategy. But also, in the Spanish and Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Leclerc's engine failed him. And that was obviously a massive advantage now given to Red Bull in terms of the championship. I'm not going to pretend, by the way, that Red Bull are leading by... Um, or Max Verstappen is leading by 49 points over Leclerc. Purely because the Red Bull is quicker and Verstappen is better. I'm not going to pretend that's the case. Leclerc has had quite a bit of bad luck. And Ferrari definitely in the you know last two or three weeks or last month really have really just crumbled in this title fight. And that has definitely benefited Max Verstappen quite a bit. Um, but quickly, before we get on to Ferrari, you know, the role they are really... Uh, or more so into the role they've really played in Verstappen now being, for me, uncatchable in the championship. Let's quickly get on to some stats regarding Max Verstappen, showing how impressive he's been and how, given his current form, it's going to be 
very hard for anyone, literally anyone, to stop him. He's had six wins in 2022, and he's won five of the last six races. He is dominating Formula 1 right now. This is also Red Bull's longest winning streak since 2013. Obviously, we remember that, you know, uh, Sebastian Vettel winning streak from the end of 2013 that was incredible. Um, and yeah, he is not far away for Stappen and Red Bull from getting to those types of numbers. And Max Verstappen, in the nine races so far, has won 66% of the races so far in 2022. That is a an amazing number, considering how on pace the you know, Red Bull and Ferrari are so close to each other. It's not as though, you know, Red Bull are, you know, almost a second a lap quicker at pretty much every track. So amazing for Stappen has been this season. And remember, two races this season, he obviously DNF'd. So yeah, a, a very, very impressive season. And in the form for Stappen's in, he is going to be very hard to stop, I think, going forward now for the rest of the season. But obviously, Ferrari, like I said, they have played a role in the championship gap becoming so, so big. And... Yeah, with those reliability problems uh, that they've had in the last month or so, it now forces Ferrari into a very, very difficult position um, because now they are going to be forced, not just with Charles Leclerc, but also Carlos Sainz at probably a race or two remaining in the season to take uh, engine penalties for um, you know using too many parts. And we'll get on to now the power unit elements because... It is not looking great for Ferrari on this aspect. By the way, credit to uh, F1Fansite.com for this little table. So you can see these are the used power unit elements for absolutely everyone. The ones that are highlighted in the numbers, I think, are the people that are either on the limit or they have exceeded. So you can see Charles Leclerc there, who is fifth down the list. He is on four ICEs, or his fourth ICE, fourth turbocharger, fourth MGUH and MGUK, and now second control electronics. And the reason he got a penalty um, in Canada is because he took on a completely new power unit, meaning a new ICE, turbocharger, yeah, MGUH, MGUK, and you're not supposed to use more than three of the ICE, TC, MGUH, MGUK, in a season so now that he's exceeded it already by race nine and we still have i think 13 or 12 races to go something like that that means that leclerc is probably gonna have to take probably two more grid penalties this season from using new parts at least maybe three maybe even four if ferrari cannot sort out their reliability and you can see for carlos sites carlos is now on his final ICE, so he'll have to take a penalty probably at some Grand Prix um, uh, down the line, uh, maybe just after the summer break. So in terms of power unit elements that have been used so far, Ferrari are in a very bad position because even if they have a better car than Red Bull for the majority of the races between now and the end of the season, Leclerc's going to have to sacrifice probably three of those races to Red Bull and Verstappen because they'll have to start at, at you know at best 10th or 11th on the grid. So yeah, that's a big reason why I think Ferrari are out of the championship fight. And when you look at Verstappen, Verstappen, I mean, despite the two reliability problems, which actually weren't to do with the power unit, and by the way, Sergio Perez's retirement in the Canadian Grand Prix um, weren't actually, or wasn't actually, sorry, to do with the power unit. It was actually a gearbox problem. Both Red Bulls are on target to not get any penalties this season with the parts they've used so far. But Ferrari are, well, with Leclerc, twice as bad. So even if Ferrari have a very quick car, like I said, for the rest of the season, they'll have to sacrifice um, two or three races at least going forward. And given that Red Bull are so quick right now, I just do not see how... With, you know, this power unit situation as it is in terms of the used parts, the in much improved pace of the Red Bull and the way Ferrari are as a team, uh, you know, blowing a 46-point lead after Australia and now it's completely reversed 
into almost the exact same position for Verstappen now. I just do not see how Ferrari can possibly overturn that in the championship. And we'll go to now the championship standings. Max Verstappen leading on 175 points. Sergio Perez is second on 129. Leclerc not even second even in the championship. And yeah, he is 49 points behind. For me, because Ferrari, I don't think can go on a long enough run of, you know, victories to really force themselves back into the title fight. And because they'll have to take some more grid penalties this season, for me, the championship race is over. It is dead and buried. Verstappen is going to be, for me, um, world champion this year and win his second F1 championship. And also, in the constructor standings, uh, Red Bull are, I think, 80 odd points clear. Uh, or nearly 80-odd points clear in that. And I think Red Bull will definitely win the Constructors' Championship as well. And it would be, if they did win it, uh, their first Constructors' title in nine years. Very long time for them to wait for a Constructors' title, considering, obviously, they had four in a row in the early 2010s decade. But looking back again at these Championship standings, I just don't see how... Now going into the 10th race of the season and almost at the halfway point, how you could possibly give Ferrari and Leclerc a chance. I mean, if it was Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes, I would give them a chance because it's Mercedes who are a much better team operationally and Lewis Hamilton obviously is a better driver. But because Leclerc, you know, first title fight um, and I don't think he is quite at the absolute peak of his powers yet, and also Ferrari are an absolute mess. I just do not see how they close that gap to Verstappen. And I mean, Leclerc hasn't even finished on the podium since Miami. That was, what, six weeks, seven weeks ago? A very long time ago, uh, that Grand Prix. So they should first focus on getting him on the podium rather than trying to win loads of races in a row and try and fight their way back into the championship because they can't even get him on to the podium. But... Yeah, Ferrari are an absolute mess, and I just don't see how they're going to force their way back into the championship fight. So for me, this man on screen is heading for his second consecutive Drivers' Championship. But guys, let me know in the comments section if you disagree with me, which I, I expect some people will. Let me know um, if you think Leclerc still has a chance... Let me know the scenario in which Leclerc still gets, you know, back into the championship fight. And if you still think Leclerc will win the championship, again, let me know the scenario in how he does so. Because I'll be very interested to see what people say in regards to that. Because I don't want people to just say, oh, you know, it, it's not over yet. And then, you know, not say how they think, you know, Ferrari and Leclerc could get back into things. But... Yeah, six wins in a row for Red Bull. Such an impressive streak. And for Stappen, you have to say he is now reaching the peak of his powers and dominating Formula 1 um, in 2022. And going into the next Grand Prix at Silverstone, I think it'll be very hard to stop. And I think we'll win definitely quite a few more races in 2022.